Spectrum analyzers are important pieces of test instrumentation for testing radio frequency circuits and systems. In this video we'll describe what they are, we'll look at the different types and describe how they work so you can choose the best type for your needs. There are several different variations of spectrum analyzer but all of them perform the same function. The oscilloscope we're all very familiar with displays the instantaneous voltage on the vertical axis against time on the horizontal axis. This shows waveforms in the time domain. But the spectrum analyzer is different. It displays signals in the frequency domain showing amplitude on the vertical axis against frequency on the horizontal axis. The operation of a spectrum analyzer can be explained in its basic format by imagining a filter with its response curve. This filter is scanned over the required frequency band or span and the resulting output transferred to a display where a visualization of the signal content of the spectrum is shown. In this way it's possible to obtain a plot of the signals within a given portion of the radio frequency spectrum. Spectrum analyzers can be used for testing out a variety of parameters on RF circuits and systems. Spectrum analyzers are used to either measure signals that we know or find signals that we don't know such as spurious. In this way, spectrum analyzers can be used for testing a host of circuits and ensuring that the signals are correct and that spurious signals will not cause interference to users on other channels. This is very important these days with usage of the radio spectrum increasing. There are several different types of spectrum analyzer that are available on the market. There are two main types of spectrum analyzer. Traditionally we had the analog spectrum analyzer which used the heterodyne mixing principle to downconvert signal and detect and measure the signal using analog filters. Analog spectrum analyzers use the superheterodyne principle and they're also often called swept or sweep analyzers. Looking at the block diagram, we see the signal enters via an attenuator. This is to ensure the signal is at the required level. It is then filtered and passes into a mixer. The frequency of the local oscillator for this is controlled by a ramp generator so that the frequency increases linearly with time. The output from the mixer is amplified and filtered before being applied to a logarithmic amplifier to ensure the output is displayed in decibels. An envelope detector along with video filter are used to put the signal into a form where the amplitude element can be applied to the vertical axis of the display. The horizontal axis is driven by the ramp generator, the same one that also controls the frequency of the local oscillator, and this means that any particular frequency has a unique point on the horizontal axis of the display. More modern spectrum analyzers use a digital approach which have fast Fourier transforms and all the filtering is done digitally which results in faster signal processing and much faster sweep times. As we see from this simplified block diagram of an FFT spectrum analyzer, the signal enters and its level is adjusted to the required range. It is filtered to remove frequencies above the range to prevent higher frequency signals entering as a result of a process called aliasing. The signal is then sampled at regular intervals and the results pass to an analog to digital converter. This converts them into a series of voltage samples that are passed to the digital signal processor that uses the fast Fourier transforms to undertake the required calculations and processing. Finally, the signal is passed to the display where the required output can be seen on a screen. We also have real-time spectrum analyzers that take the FFT of the signal but also there is a gapless uh, signal processing in there so that we don't miss any of the signal uh, if it happens for a very short period of time. Real-time spectrum analyzers are becoming increasingly important because transient signals are difficult to see with traditional analyzers. Some signals, like this GSM signal, appear as a short burst, or a signal may hop between different frequencies, or it may be necessary to look at any one of a number of different types of transient signal. Another reason for wanting to look at transient effects is where a short-lived spurious signal occurs. It's important to see any of these short-lived or transient signals to check their operation and to track down any issues that may exist. Spectrum analyzers come in a variety of different packages. There are the traditional box style analyzers. 
but it's also possible to have card-based spectrum analyzers that are slotted into PXI racks along with other instruments. Some spectrum analyzers can be used with computers and they may be connected via a USB or other link. These analyzers are often small but utilize the processing power, the power supply and the display of the computer, making them much cheaper and smaller than many other instruments. However, it is also possible to buy handheld spectrum analyzers. These are ideal for many field service applications. For those needing more functionality, signal analyzers that measure both amplitude and phase are available. But that's the topic for another video.